My name is Lily Sommer and I work at the Patterson Institute for Cancer Research within the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom. We are co-funded by Cancer Research UK. I have been using the protein system for labor-free interaction analysis for the past four years, studying signaling lipids called phosphinositides, whose misregulation has been linked to cancer. Label-free interaction analysis has allowed us to identify and characterize novel phosphinositide binding proteins and also characterize a novel phosphinositide binding domain. Please listen to the following webinar where I'll describe a new lipid chip that uses DNA hybridization to capture liposomes for the detection of phosphinositide protein interactions. Today, we are honored to have Lily Summer from UK as our invited speaker. Before Lily starts, I would like to take a few minutes to introduce the Proteon Label Free SPR system and the new lipid application kit that Lily used for her excellent research work. As an SPR platform for label-free biomolecular interaction analysis, Proteon employs an advanced crisscross fluidic system with six vertical channels for data mobilization and six horizontal channels for analyzed injection. Proteon, Proteon is able to analyze 36 interactions in a single run using just a single data chip. By doing the 6x6 interaction array, it provides an efficient approach for experiment optimization and multiple referencing options, which can increase the data quality. Also, it provides versatility for experiment designs, which, such as screening or characterization of biomolecular interaction. So if you have different applications, the versatility of this uh, experiment configuration can help you to design your experiment and in the right way to increase the efficiency. And finally, it gives you high throughput for kinetic screening. Now we have a SPR platform. Let's talk about uh, the application we are going to focus on today. We know lipid is a type of biomolecules. And the phospholipid is a type of lipid, which is a, a building block for cell membranes or artificial lipid assemblies, such as liposomes and lipoparticles. By the way, lipoparticles are virus-like particles that people use more and more today to carry membrane proteins on its surface. And its surface is also a lipid bilayer membrane, the same as liposomes or cell membranes. So the lipid assemblies can be used in label free protein interact analysis uh, as two, <coughs> playing two different roles. One is it can be used as carriers for membrane proteins, as you see on the lipoparticles, particles, and people can also enter or reconstruct membrane proteins on the surface of liposomes. This is the way, the same way that membrane protein proteins anchor themselves to down membrane, like it shows in this graph. And this is an important application in membrane protein research. And the second, uh, they can be used as targets for lipid binding molecules. And this is what really going to focus on today. So the protein lipid kits are launched to facilitate lipid-based applications. And these are the two protein lipid kits. One is called protein liposome capturing kit. The other is called protein GLC lipid kit. So in short, I call this one LCT kit and this one GLC kit. These kits were launched last, uh, last month. The LCP kit is based on a novel technology using DNA hybridization to enter liposomes to the surface. Because uh, the surface is established, the surface chemistry is based on the 
DNA hybridization, so the surface is very hydrophilic. With this hydrophilic surface chemistry, it can realize low non-specific binding, easy surface regeneration, and it also provides high capacity by allowing multiple layer capturing. So it can capture multiple layers of lipid assembly, like liposomes, because we use DNA tag, and the tag can be tagged to different layers of liposomes, and they, we can stack them together on top of the fancy chip surface. So this is a novel approach, and it, has, uh, it was not offered, it was not available in the market. This is the, um, the first time, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the first time uh, you see a hydrophilic surface chemistry to capture lipid assembly. The TLC kit is based on the traditional technology using lipophilic surface to capture liposomes. Using with a reagent kit, it provides the flexibility of adjusting surface lipophilicity of the chip. So you can find you know, the surface properties just right for your needs. And also it has lower cost because this regional kit can be used with multiple GLC sensor chips. GLC is the most commonly used proteome sensor chip. So it can be easily <coughs> used and it has a lower cost for application for the liquid based application. Here I want to show you uh, two examples. Uh, they are both based on these uh, new kits. The last one shows a lipid membrane protein interaction. So our testers uh, during the uh, product development immobilized POPC blank liposome on the surface to as a model system for cell membrane. And then they studied the interaction between the cell membrane and the venom toxin, melatonin. And we know melatonin will form holes on the surface of the, um, on the cell surface. And then later, it can even rupture the liposome at high concentration. So these were exactly we observed. At first, at the lower concentration, we see the binding between the proteome, top and melaton, and the liposome. And later, after uh, increasing the concentration, we see the rupture of the liposomes, the lipid assemblies. And on the right side, this is a study between an antibody and a membrane protein, uh, CXCR4. We use uh, lipoparticles particles directly purchased from Integral Molecular, which is a company based in the U.S. providing off-the-shelf membrane protein carried um, lipoparticles. particles. We immobilize the lipoparticles particles to the surface and then inject the antibody. So we see the binding between the antibody and the membrane protein, and we can resolve kinetics from that. I also listed the key benefits or advantages of these two kits here, but I won't go to details because you will see in Lily's uh, presentation how these how the kit, especially the LCD kit, works for in her research, and you will see a lot of details there. And now, now let me pass the presenting right uh, to Lily. Okay, hello everyone again. So, yes, I was talking about phosphinositide and lipid signaling molecules. So now that you can see my presentation, again, so phosphinositide molecules consist of this hydrophobic diethylglycerol backbone and then the hydrophilic inositol head group that can be phosphorylated at the 3, 4, and 5 positions, giving rise to these seven different phosphorinositide species. And what this little diagram here shows also is that there are certain protein domains that we know can interact with those phosphorinositides. And some of these domains, depending on the protein context, can be highly specific for one phosphorinositide species over all the others. And then one other thing I'd like to tell you about phosphorinositides is that we know that there's two pools of phosphorinositides within the cell. 
So first of all, there's the membranous pool of phosphinocytide, where we find those lipids in membranes like the plasma membrane, the Golgi, the ER. So sort of an environment that we would expect lipids to be within the cell. But then in the last decade, it has also become clear that there is an endonuclear, non-membranous pool of phosphinocytide. So even when you strip the nucleus of its membrane, you'll still be able to detect phosphinocytides and their reactions and downstream signaling events within the nucleus. And why I'm stressing these different pools of phosphinocytides um, will become clear a little bit later on in the talk. And yes, so when I came to join the lab four years ago, we wanted to identify novel phosphinocytide binding proteins. However, at that time, there was no other technologies that allow to detect binding of proteins to phosphinocytides um, without having to actually label your protein. So that time we came to use SDR. And um, so for that we had to first obviously develop a chip that allows us to detect phosphinocytide protein interactions. And um, so the chip that Ruben also mentioned earlier, um, I will refer to it as the 11 lipid chip. So for that, we use the GLC chip, and then we activate the carboxylic group on the chip surface, and then we covalently couple this long chain hydrocarbon molecule under thylamine onto the chip surface. So that's the 11 molecule as hydrophobic characteristics. So then after you've activated your surface and covalently coupled the under thylamine as shown in that um, sensogram here, you will have a sensor surface that is hydrophobic. So that potentially allows you to capture lipids onto the sensor surface. And one way of presenting phosphinocytide lipids is in the form of these liposomes, or these vesicles that are surrounded by a lipid bilayer. And the liposomes that we use are we use are made up of 98% of the carrier lipids and then 2% of a specific type of phosphinocytide. Yeah, how we captured the phosphinocytide liposomes onto the chip surface and how we then use um, protein domains that are known interactors of phosphinocytides as positive controls and initially to test if it was possible to detect protein and phosphinocytide interactions by STR. So a few examples are shown here. So we've got the pH domain of TLC delta 1, which is a specific binder of TR4-5C2 in the plasma membrane. And as you can see, we see the binding response in the clean channel, which contains TR4-5C2 containing liposomes. And then with a different domain, the five domain of a protein called HRS, we see binding in the light blue channel, which contains PI3P um, lysosomes. And then another pH domain of GLP1, which binds TIP3, shows binding in the orange channel, which actually contains TIP3 lysosomes. And because these proteins are GST tests, we then use GST as a negative control. And as you can see, we don't detect binding with the GST. So leaving us to um, conclude that um, you can actually use um, those phosphinocytide containing liposomes and SDR to specifically detect protein phosphinocytide interactions. However, when we then try to see binding for proteins that are known to interact with the endonuclear phosphinocytides. We were unable um, to see any binding um, onto the C11 um, liposome surface, um, um, no matter what we try. So we also try to you know different densities of liposomes and different um, 
having different amounts of phosphinositite, but it wouldn't work on the C11 surface. And then another sort of little disadvantage that I found with the C11 surface is that um, because you actually only capture the lysosomes for hydrophobic interaction, you can strip them off the chip um, by injecting detergent onto the center surface. And then you can actually reload fresh lysosomes. But after about four times of reloading, you then start seeing loading responses that look like this rather than um, initially where you loaded really uniform levels in all the interaction spots. And then obviously if you load in one interaction spot like here, about 6,000 IU units of lysosomes compared to almost 8,000 here, it then makes it difficult to reference and to compare responses within different analyte channels. And so that's why we were really interested in collaborating with BioRed and testing this second type of um, lipid SPR chip, which I'm going to refer to as a mem layer like so chip. So as Ruben said, you use an LCT chip here, which is a naked um, gold surface that has neutral avidin molecules coupled to it, allowing you to capture biotinylated molecules onto the sensor surface. And then you use this mem layer kit, kit to capture your liposomes via DNA hybridization. And here is a little bit more detail of how this principle works. So first of all, you to have a biotinylated single strand of DNA molecule, which you capture um, onto the LCT surface. And at the same time, you prepare the lysosome as usual. So for us, 98% of carrier lipid and 2% of phosphinositide. However, this time we also add um, this DNA tag, which has two cholesterol molecules that are hydrophobic and will insert into the lipid bilayer structure. And then those cholesterol molecules are connected to a DNA um, molecule that is partly double-stranded but has a single-stranded overhang. And that single-stranded overhang is complementary to the single-stranded DNA on the LCP chip, allowing you to capture those um, lysosomes onto the chip surface via DNA hybridization. And then the other thing that memlayer technology allows you to do is to actually capture multiple layers of lysosomes onto the sensor surface and again via DNA hybridization and then this time between different layers of the lysosomes. And here are a few um, centigrams of how we prepare that chip. So first, obviously, the loading of the um, single-stranded DNA, and then the loading of the DNA tag um, phosphinositide containing the lysosomes. And as I mentioned, you can then actually capture a second layer of lysosomes. And for this, you first can get a different type of cholesterol molecule um, cholesterol DNA type molecule, which which will insert into the lysosomes that are already on the surface, and then efficiently allowing you to capture a second layer of lysosomes, as you can see here. So in this sensogram, it's the combined responses of the third layer of the first um, lysosomes, and here that little incline is the capturing of it, so cholesterol. Um, DNA molecules, and then lastly, the second uh, layer of lysosomes captured. And then when we used um, that chip and tested our positive and negative controls, what you can see is that the pH domain of PLC delta 1, the binds TF45P2, um, shows binding to TF45P2 here in the green channel. And then um, in the blue channel, where we loaded two layers of those TR45C2 containing lysosomes, you see almost double the response. So showing you that potentially having multiple layers of lysosomes 
allows you to see an increase in your binding response, which of course is very important um, or can potentially be very important if you're working with low um, responses or if you're working with small molecules. And then again, no binding negative control and we're just showing another domain and again it's very specific um, for the PI3 to contain lysosomes as expected and no binding to um, any of the other lysosomes. And then the big surprise with that technology came um, when we tested, the, again, those domains that bind endonuclear phosphoinositides. So those were the proteins that we know bind in phosphoinositides in the nucleus, but we couldn't detect the binding using a C11 surface. However, when we presented the liposomes with that memlayer technology, we now see binding of these proteins. Um, here shown in an example of the PhD domain of ING2, um, and that found um, PF45C2 containing liposomes. And interestingly, those proteins seem to prefer a single layer of liposomes over a double layer which might have to do with the fact that they are nuclear proteins and can be lipids in a different way within the nucleus. And here a second um, protein and again that shows better binding to PR4-5P2 containing lysosomes in a single layer compared to a double layer and it also shows binding to PI3P containing lysosomes. And that binding is specific, which I've tested by ingesting a mutant of that um, protein that I know doesn't bind for spinocytes anymore. And as you can see, there's no binding um, for that mutant. And I've also tested that the binding is concentration dependent, which is shown here for the single layer of tr 4 5 p 2 lysosome. So, that leads me to conclude that um, the advantage for us in using this memlayer technology was that for the first time we were able to detect binding of um, those proteins that bind um, endonuclear phosphinositides by SPR, which we were not able to do with the C11 chip. And then another thing um, that I found is that, again, you can strip the liposomes by disturbing the DNA hybridization, which you can do either by injecting detergent or water onto the um, sensor surface. And as I mentioned for the C11 chip, I found that the loading gets non-uniform after a few um, times of reloading, but that I didn't find with the memlayer chip, and I've reloaded it a lot of times, and it was always very uniform to all the interaction spots within one channel. And I don't have time to show the exact data of what we've done, but I'd like to sort of just give you a brief summary of what we've used the SDR technology in the lab for. So we successfully used it to identify novel phosphinocytide binding proteins, um, some of which I've then characterized further for residues um, within their binding domains that are crucial for phosphinocytide binding, which then obviously allows me to take those proteins in vivo and look what the phosphinocytide binding ability does to the protein function. And I've also used the SPR technology to characterize a novel phosphinocytide binding domain. And, um, yeah, that leads me to thank everyone from the lab, the core facility at the Patterson, um, Jonathan from BioRet, who's been a great help over the last two years, and then obviously the Patterson, CIUK, and Manchester University for funding. Thank you.